welcome everyone to part two of the June overview. We are going to get straight into Libra Moon. So welcome Libra Moon. Thanks so much for joining. We're going to take a look at your fast moving planets. Then we're going to take a look at your slow moving planets. As for slow moving last time we did Saturn. I've put Saturn in the overview this time. So we're going to look at uh, some different transits for you there. But in terms of your fast moving planets, let's get stuck in straight away. And I'm just going to move that book over there. Right, so you've got the sun transitioning from your 8th house to the ninth house around June 14th, 15th, around that sort of time there. And... To me, this looks like you've had some hurdles at work. Um, you possibly had some health issues as well. Uh, and, and this is really quite possibly a good time to ease yourself into a health health regime, a new health regime of some kind. Um, you know, don't go out and do anything crazy, but um, it might be a simple matter of introducing five minutes of yoga into your day every day or something like that. Obviously some sun, sun salutations would really help uh, since we are talking about the sun here. And honestly, you can do, I think I think Deepak Chopra says he does like four sun salutations a day and that's it. And that doesn't, that just takes a few minutes. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury on the 10th of June in is moving into your... Ninth house, okay, yeah, Mercury is, is taking quite a big, uh, going, taking quite a big transit here. It's going to go into three different places in, uh, in your chart. So 10th of June, he's moving into the 9th, so from the 8th into the 9th, and then on the 25th of June, moving from the 9th into the 10th. So let's take a look at this particular transit here. Okay, so it's a little bit little bit of a mixed bag. Um, you've got a good transit up until the 10th of June uh, when he goes, just before he goes into the night. So when he's in the 8th, that's quite nice. Good social status, um, comfortable, you know, materially you'll be comfortable. It'll be nice. It's, um, you know, this is a nice place for Mercury to be. Mercury likes to be here. Of course, when Mercury transitions, so we've got from the 10th of June to the 25th of June, things might dip a little bit and that transit's not so great. There could be some arguments. You might just want to go easy with people around you. And I realise it's not you, but just uh, people might be a little bit more crazy than usual. So don't worry, it's not you, definitely not you. You're perfect, remember that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could have some losses in finances as well, possibly. This is an ideal, this 10th June to the 25th of June, but things pick up after that. Things pick up really nicely. Um, you can experience a boost to your income. You might have career opportunities. Things might be better. And of course, your spirituality will pick up as well uh, after the... Um, after the 25th of June then. If we take a look at Venus on the 9th of June, Venus moves from the 9th house to the 10th house. And this, okay, yeah, some good times here, but um, <coughs> possibly some stress and some hurdles at work after the 9th of June. Before that, it's good. Venus is having a good time. Venus loves being uh, in the ninth. So there's gains, fortune, luck, travel, some nice things, good education, um, you know, good ability to concentrate, that kind of thing. But then when Venus moves into the tenth, Venus doesn't particularly like being there and you could experience some stress, possibly some hurdles at work. Um, I've got a note here, be cautious with your finances and, uh, you know, Try not to get involved in, in arguments. So, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag here with the fast-moving planets. Um, you know, it's interesting to note there with Venus and Mercury, you know, when Venus is, uh, you know, well, when Venus is giving you a bit of stress, Mercury is coming in with the good stuff. So, really, Mercury is quite a bit of a highlight for your fast-moving planets this time. Slow moving, what have we got going on here? We've got Mars K2 conjunction in the fourth house. Uh, you've also got a full moon happening in the third house. That's June 27th. 
So here we're looking at, yeah, you want to take care. You want to take care uh, when you're out and about. If you're driving, for example, that's an interesting thing. I haven't particularly mentioned that for anyone else, but I'm mentioning it for you. Be careful while you're out and about. Be careful driving. Be careful care to do with um, your mom's health. You know, uh, you know, just be just be giving your mum kind of positive vibes and positive energy. Uh, careful with anything to do with property dealings as well. Um, property does fall into this. And yeah, in terms of um, Mars as well here, I mean, you're going to want some courage. And there could be uh, again, possibilities of arguments around you, that kind of thing. So that's happening here as well with the Mars Ketu conjunction. In terms of the full moon, though, you'll be able to integrate learnings around finances and health. So this is a time of, of really delving into your health, I think, learning more about your health. What tiny increments, and we're talking small increments, can you do? that just shift things and that just make everything better. One thing, I'll give you a little tip, something I've been doing recently um, that's been, helped a huge amount. I put a tiny little bit of Moringa powder, green natural Moringa powder that I get from the health food shop, put a little bit of that in my tea. And that has been great for my digestion and um, energy and that kind of thing. And I, I don't put too much. I was trying with like a quarter teaspoon and I'm telling you a quarter teaspoon was terrible, but when I tried with a tiny, tiny amount, that actually did the trick. So what I'm noticing with health is that it's the subtleties, it's the little things that you can do, little tweaks you can make that will really make a difference. Let's take a look at what Rahu is doing in the 10th house to March uh, 2019. Yeah, of course, so Ketu, Rahu, they're going to be there till about March 2019. So these are kind of longer transits uh, that I'm talking about. So this is good. This is growth in your career. You can improve your professional image. Um, you might be feeling restless and you might be finding it a bit tricky to sleep. Possibly this um, transit can cause a bit of an energetic imbalance for some people. So watch out for that. Um, Again, that's a health principle again. So it'll be the kind of sleep hygiene, you know, um, make sure you turn off all electronics an hour before bed, dim the lights, uh, all that kind of thing. Try to relax before you sleep. That's always a good idea. And Rahu in the tent there as well. Another thing that might be a concern of yours is the health of your mother. So um, do try and carve some time out to spend uh, with your mum. And we've got Jupiter in your first house through to mid-October. Jupiter's retrograde till about, I think it's early July. Pretty sure it's like the 10th of July. What's happening here? Okay, again, dip in health, dip in energy, arguments, that kind of thing. Yeah, again, this is not ideal. Uh, great time for spirituality, though. Great time. And of course it is, because when things aren't going right in the outer, you've really got to go within. And this is a terrific time to go within. It's a good time for solitude. It's a good time to be doing activities like this, like watching your astrology and, and going within and trying to work out that macrocosm, microcosm. What is it that I can shift a little bit within me that's going to have a really big impact in the outer world? So it's, it's not so much about looking at the outer world because as we can see here, things are a little bit challenging. So um, do take care, Libra Moon. Thank you so much. For joining and I'm now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Welcome Scorpio Moon, thank you so much for joining. Uh, let's take a look at what's happening with your fast moving planets. So we've got Sun moving uh, on around June 14th to 15th, shifting from your 7th house to the 8th house. So perhaps you've noticed that it's been hard to make progress at work lately. Um, perhaps you've been coming across some opposition, quite possibly. Um, this is also a time to really take care of your health. So it's quite similar to Libra Moon, actually. What I was saying to them, I was saying that, you know, um, try to incorporate some new health regime, health thing into your regime and it might be as simple as like a two-minute plank every day 
or one yoga move that you just do as soon as you wake up or just before you fall asleep at night, go to bed kind of thing. I always find that with health things, if you can link it in to something that you have to do anyway, like, okay, I take a shower every day, so I'll do my little five minutes of exercise before my shower every day. That's the kind of thing that you want to be looking to do. Um, Mercury on the 10th of June moving into your 8th house and then of course on the 25th of June he's moving into the ninth house so Mercury is doing quite a transit he's going across really three houses uh, so a little bit of a mixed bag here you know um, as Mercury comes up to the 10th of June you might find that things are a little bit tricky work-wise. Seniors might be scrutinizing you a little bit more or, you know, really um, checking you out at work kind of thing. Then you're going to have this nice transit between 10th of June to 25th of June where you'll have some relief. Social scene should pick up. You'll feel quite comfortable uh, with finances, money, that kind of thing should be quite nice. Then Mercury transitions uh, after the 25th into the ninth house and this could get a little bit argumentative. Um, might be some loss in finances and I put a note here about arguments with your father that may or may not happen. I know in the Vedic system um, some people uh, see the father from the ninth house, some people see the father from the 10th. So I generally tend to see father from the 10th but I mean um, you know uh, I've just put a little note just in case might be something to watch out for uh, Venus on the 9th of June shifts from your 8th house to the 9th house and this is looking good 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 oh I'm happy for you I'm very happy for you Scorpio moon this is fantastic there's some good energy to be had here so the money should be increasing opportunities for wealth should be increasing great time to spend with the one that you love or to meet the one that you want to love have dreamed of think about even though they're not there but you know that they're there and you know that they're coming because they're coming uh listen to some abraham hicks and you will be tuning into the wavelength of your partner within no time Games, luck, pilgrimage, yes, you can travel, you can go places with this beautiful energy. Uh, travel, success in education, all that kind of thing. I mean, all round, this is really, really lovely energy. So thank goodness for Venus. Venus is giving you some good energy to look forward to. Uh, your slow moving transits, let's have a look at what's happening here. Mars K2 conjunction in your third house. Uh, that's happening to about March 2019 and we're going to have a look at Rahu in a minute. We're also going to have a quick look at your full moon in the second house. So what's happening with Mars K through conjunction? Yeah, I mean this is nice. This is very, very nice. Okay, so you've got like an easy time. Uh, money coming in. Lucky you. This is a great, great transit. This is a long transit. It's a very good transit. I'm very happy for you. Uh, progress at work. Good profits. Good health. You know, and when that full moon comes in the second house, it'll be about integrating learnings around relationships with other people. And uh, I'm sure you'll have some really good things to integrate as well. And things coming to fruition, things culminating, you know, something something completing perhaps, a cycle completing, but in a good way, a really nice way. So this is beautiful energy you've got going on there. Uh, Rahu in the ninth house, as I said, to March 2019. This is beautiful as well. This is great for travel. This is great for higher education. Rahu loves being here. Great for spirituality. Great to be expanding your spirituality. Great to be watching videos like this. Uh, and one thing that you might want to look out for is um, things might get a little bit argumentative here and there uh, when it comes to work, possibly when it comes to parents, that's just something that you might want to watch out for, but really on the whole it's feeling really, really good. Jupiter in your 12th house to mid-October, and it's currently retrograde till about July the 10th, so what's happening here? Your expenses might increase because of Jupiter being here, yeah, and increase to losses uh, there in the 12th house, absolutely. Uh, good time to spend on spiritual activities, great time to do that. Foreign places, great for a bit of solitude. Perhaps you might want to, with the Venus energy there, take the one you love somewhere special for a bit of solitude, um, but great to, to concentrate 
on and expand your spirituality. And also could be a time to be careful of business decisions as well. So that's just something to look out for there. Okay, Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Welcome, Sagittarius Moon. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to take a look at your fast-moving planets. So we've got the sun moving uh, June 14th to 15th, shifting from the 6th house to the 7th house. Looks like up until June the 14th, you've got a boost to your health. But then after that period of 15th, 14th, it's looking like um, things could get a bit argumentative around you, challenges at work. There could be some issues there. So just be careful. Um, sun's not delighted to be in the seventh house. So that's in particular to do with work and business, possibly to do with your significant other as well. Mercury on the 10th of June is going into the 7th house and the 25th of June is going into your 8th house. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a little bit of a mixed bag um, in that Mercury, you know, before 10th of June, you're looking at a lot of success, a lot of overcoming obstacles, uh, victory, winning if you're in a battle with someone this is really really good energy but then from the 10th of June to the 25th of June just a little bit of a dip possibly um, seniors might be finding fault with your work or something like that probably because you're sky high you know uh, you're all lit up and then people notice you more and then they pick on you a little bit more so it could be a little bit of that kind of energy going on there um, but then don't worry because after 25th of June again your social status should be on the rise things should be quite comfortable there with the mercury energy so that's looking quite good Venus uh, we're looking at June the 9th it'll shift from the 7th to the 8th house yeah, I mean, this is looking quite nice. In the lead up to that, up to June the 9th, it might be a bit of stress at work, stress to do with your partner. Venus doesn't particularly like being in the seventh house, but then after that, Venus is very happy. So the money will get better and time with your partner will be good. So don't worry, it's going to get better. Things are going to get better definitely after the 9th of June when it comes to Venus. Okay, let's take a look at your slow moving planet. So we've got Mars K2 conjunct in the second house, uh, moon in full moon happening in your first house, June the 27th. So yeah, if things haven't been brilliant, um, this could be why. Uh, finances can be difficult to, to grow at this time with this placement. Um, you might be a little bit more prone to anger than is usual. Uh, you know, and, and when it comes to that full moon in the first house on June the 27th, that'll be a time of culmination where you're going to integrate things and learn things come full circle hopefully you know, complete a cycle hopefully on something to do with love relationships and yourself. So take it easy, uh, take it easy with people around you, just realize that you know what, I'm not going to take this personally, it's a transit, it's temporary, this is going to change. So um, just, just know that there. Now we've got Rahu in the 8th house, uh, again with the, so the K2 that I just explained is to March 2019 and Rahu in the 8th that's about to March 2019 as well. Um, this will be a time to really watch your health, to build in some new health regimes or, um, you know, those little things. I don't know if I talked about this when I was in your son or did I talk about this in the sign before. I'm going to talk about it again. doesn't matter. This is always good to keep repeating. When it comes to your health, just do something tiny incremental changes that you can incorporate into your day really easily. So it might be adding a new yoga move that you do, um, maybe five minutes of yoga every day, just some small things that you can do that you know will have a really good impact uh, on your health. Could also be changes to diet as well. You might be incorporating um, a new vitamin or a new supplement or something like that. I don't know if this was, I don't think I've mentioned it in your sign, probably a couple of signs ago, I mentioned that I've recently added moringa into my diet, just a tiny, tiny little pinch of moringa in my tea. That has been enough to do some really good things for me. So what I've found with health is that you actually want to be quite subtle. 
When I first tried moringa, I was doing like a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon. That was a disaster. That just was terrible. Actually, the tinier the amount, the better it's been working for me. So that's really interesting. Uh, so health-wise, that's why I'm going on about this because Rahu in the 8th, you do want to watch your health and you want to look after your health and you want to be doing good for you type things um, like adding a little bit of yoga every day or, um, you know, just, just adding in something healthy or, or taking out something healthy that, that you know you shouldn't do. Uh, this could be a time with Rahu in the Eighth, so you, you might stumble on some hidden treasure. You might uncover some secrets. You might learn something new. Uh, you might have quite an adventure here as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag with Rahu in the Eighth, but it's it's, it's going to be good. Uh, Jupiter in your eleventh house to mid October. My goodness, I'm loving this for you. So Jupiter is currently retrograde, and he's going to go forward again. I think it's July the tenth. Um, but I'm telling you, this is a terrific uh, placement. You're very, very lucky, Sagittarius Moon. This is great. You're getting some good Jupiter action here. Not everyone's getting this. I can tell you that right now. Um, you're getting respect, prestige. Uh, your children are supportive. You know, success on the material plane. Um, you know, it's a great time for love as well. Great time for love and romance. And if you're looking to find the one... You never know, you never know. So uh, Sagittarius Moon, good time for you. All right, let's jump into Capricorn Moon. Welcome Capricorn Moon. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to take a look at your fast moving planets. I am going to talk quite quickly because we've got another couple of signs to get through and I don't want my camera to freeze because it's been doing that lately. Um, Fast moving planets. So you've got the sun on June 14th to 15th, shifting from your fifth house to your sixth house. Uh, you might have been experiencing some issues at work, quite possibly. I mean, who isn't? You know, that's, that's nothing hugely uh, predictive right there. But <laughs> what I can tell you is that your health will definitely improve. Um, yeah, because I think the sun does like being in the sixth house. Your health will improve and you will experience success. Yeah, definitely after 14, 15, uh, things are going to pick up for you health-wise, definitely, and success-wise. Your plans will come to fruition. This is a really good transit. That's really nice energy going on there. Uh, Mercury is making quite a big transit, so Mercury is covering a lot of ground this time. Uh, 10th of June. He's moving into the 6th house and 25th of June he's moving into the 7th house. So a little bit of a mixed bag. Perhaps you've got a bit of a dip in your health up until 10th June due to Mercury. You might be feeling that you have to work harder. You might be feeling that you're working harder and you're not really seeing too much um, come back. But don't worry because you're going to have a beautiful transit um, 10th June to 25th June. That should be really good Mercury wise. Success, victory, business growth, good times, really good times. That's a nice transit there. And then um, when Mercury goes into the 7th on the 25th of June, Mercury's not thrilled to be there. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, seniors might be finding fault with your work or, or that kind of thing. People might just be getting a little bit nitpicky because you've been on quite a bit of a high uh, with Mercury there. Let's take a look at Venus. Venus, June 9th, is shifting from your 6th house to the 7th house. Uh, so if things are tough, this could well be why. It could be due to Venus energy. Um, yeah, Venus isn't happy to be in either of these places. I can tell you that right now. Uh, and it's really a time to just kind of slow down and, you know, when things aren't going great in the outside world, if let's say you're experiencing some health issues, perhaps some fears or anxieties are coming up, perhaps people are being quite argumentative around you. Uh, and, and you've also got tension there with your partner. Apologies about that Capricorn moon. The camera just cut. So uh, let's see. I think I was talking about Venus June 9th, shifting from the 6th to the 7th house. I think I was saying that this could also include a bit of stress with your significant other. So just be mindful of that. Um, don't, don't take these things personally. You know, just know that these transits are on. Some of it may be uncomfortable, but um, it's temporary. 
and it's it's not forever so so things are definitely going to change uh things might be tough at work and your expenses might be a little bit higher a little bit higher than normal let's have a look at your slow moving planets so we've got mars k2 conjunction happening in the first house we've also got full moon happening in the 12th house and that's june the 27th so what's happening here so again um yeah, it's looking a little bit stressful. It's looking like your energy might dip a little bit. Uh, this is the kind of area where you want to pay attention to your finances. Just make sure things don't get out of hand. And in terms of that full moon in the 12th on June 27th, you're probably going to have a culmination or integration of learnings around finances and relationships. Something around either those areas individually or even the, the, those together because, you know, uh, our relationships often do contain finances as well, especially with our significant other, you know. So um, you might be learning something around that. So either finances separately or relationships separately or, in fact, the combination of the two together. So that is something that you'll be learning about and discovering more there. Let's take a look at Rahu in the seventh house. So as I've just said, Ketu in the first house, that's to about March 2019. We've got Rahu in the seventh house to about March 2019. What's going on here? Okay, this is a bit stressful here too. Um, this is not ideal, uh, but it's a terrific time for spirituality. And when things in the outer world aren't really working out, we can go within and we can figure out a lot of things and it's really about realizing that we shouldn't take it personally what's happening out there we shouldn't take it personally that they are tough transits going on do you know what i mean and tough transits will cause people to behave in certain ways that we don't expect or we don't like and what we need to do is go within and we need to see what little shift we can make inside that might have a positive impact on the outside world so that is definitely something uh, that we can do so it looks like that's some of the work that you'll be doing this month um, let's take a look Capricorn moon so we've got Jupiter in your 10th house to mid-October he's currently in retrograde he'll be going forward again July the 10th I believe uh, and again this is not ideal this is not an ideal transit Capricorn moon I really do feel for you um, you know, we've got some kind of negativity here possibly at work. Um, again, just a little note about avoid conflicts, um, possibly some, you know, property dealings. If, you, if you're trying to do some of that and you're finding you get stuck or things are slow or things are taking forever, this could be why uh, this particular Jupiter transit isn't ideal. So where is the good news in your chart i mean the good news really is happening with mercury so mercury is a good planet for you this month but really what you're looking at is some time out and going within and spiritual growth and not taking the outside world personally not taking other people personally realizing that these are transient transient transits Gosh, that's a fascinating choice of words. These are temporary transits that are just going through and things are going to get better. So the fact that you've had to go through quite a bit of, um, you know, stuff that's not ideal means that you're going to have some good stuff coming up, believe me, and it's probably all going to coincide at once too. So you've got things to look forward to. You just might want to take it easy this month. Aquarius moon, Aquarius moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, let's take a look at your fast moving planets. So you've got the sun on June 14th to 15th, shifting from your fourth house to the fifth house. And this looks like, yeah, um, it, it, it's not looking like the most ideal transit, this sun transit. Uh, you might have some tensions and worries. You might be facing some issues at work. Nothing major, of course, just, just, you know, some tensions, uh, some stress in the air there. But that's okay because let's have a look. I think you do have some nice transits elsewhere. Mercury, what's Mercury doing? 10th of June moves into your fifth house and 25th of June moves into your sixth house. 
So this is quite nice. A little bit of a mixed bag uh, in that up until 10 June, you've got new opportunities, income growth, really nice things happening there. You might have a little bit of a dip in your energy from 10th of June to 25th of June. Mercury's making quite a big transit, you see. Uh, but then you've got a really great time, 25th of June onwards. Hello, this is great. So victory, business growth, um, you know, your health will be good. Lots of really good positive things happening uh, here with Mercury. So that's fantastic. Let's take a look at Venus. June 9th, Venus is shifting from your fifth house to the sixth house. And this is looking quite good up until June, June the 9th. Uh, happiness all around, especially with children, especially with the one that you love. So that's beautiful. Uh, but then after that, yes, Venus, of course, doesn't like being in the sixth house. And that's where she is going after June the 9th. Not ideal. I'll tell you that straight up. <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not completely terrible because you've got some good Rahu energy as well. Okay, so that's quite nice. Let's get into your slow moving planets. So we've got Mars K2 conjunction happening in the 12th house. I'll get to the nice bit in a second. <laughs> I skipped ahead. I looked ahead. You've got some good things coming. So don't worry. I mean, look, Venus is not great there in the sixth, but you've got some other good things. So Mars K2 conjunction happening in your 12th house. You've got a full moon happening in the 11th house uh, on June the 27th. So what's going on here? We've got, I mean, yeah, so there's some tensions here, tensions to do with your partner. So if things have been tense with your partner, this could well be why. Um, this is a good transit for long distance travel. So that's really good. Good time for spirituality, good time to deepen your spirituality, to learn more, to indulge in that area. I would totally recommend that for you. Uh, it's looking like a good idea. Take it easy on your spouse. Take it easy on your significant other. Realize, just try not to take it personally. Just realize that um, these are temporary transits and, uh, you know, whatever tensions are there aren't, aren't there forever. Uh, in terms of that full moon in the 11th, this is an integration or culmination around gains or money, that kind of thing. So it could be the closure of a cycle, you might be learning something, you might be cashing in, who knows. Uh, it could be all kinds of things, so that is quite nice. Rahu in your sixth house to March 2019, so that was Ketu to March 2019, this is Rahu in the sixth to March 2019. This is fantastic, this is a really good transit. Um, you've got increased wealth, gains, new opportunities. I mean, Rahu just loves to get, get stuck into the sixth house. You know, he's up for uh, conquering all the enemies and cracking on and winning and achieving and, and doing all that fun thing, fun things. So you've got gains, you've got new opportunities, you've got um, property deals could be good here. You get recognition, which is great. Court cases, you'll come out on top. All this kind of thing, beautiful energy. So that's great because Rahu is what we need to pursue. We need to go forward. We need to go into the unknown. And Rahu loves to go into this area. So that's really good energy for you there. Uh, let's take a look at Jupiter in your ninth house through to mid-October. This is looking like good professional growth. Uh, finances will improve good time to be promoted. Uh, you might get some blessings from sages and mentors. How beautiful and great time for marriage and travel. And yeah, I mean, I do see, you know, you can see ninth house um, marriage, the institution of marriage. It's an institution. Where are all the institutions in the ninth house? So that's quite perfect. Um, let's take a look at Pisces moon. Pisces moon. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at your fast moving planets. So we've got the sun moving from, uh, let's see, moving June 14th to 15th, shifting from the third house to the fourth house. So this is good progress at work. Uh, 
Yeah, but not it's not yeah, so it's good progress at work up until say the fourteenth or fifteenth, but then things aren't gonna be so great, uh possibly. Uh at work. You may have some tension or stress arise. Nothing major, just a little bit of, you know, everything's not hundred percent type thing. That's all. Nothing major. Uh Mercury is moving from the third house on the 10th of June into your fourth house and then on the 25th of June into your fifth house so this looks like it might be a bit of a mixed bag um, it is a bit of a mixed bag in that in the lead up to the 10th of June you might experience some hurdles at work you might experience a dip in your health that kind of thing then we've got the 10th of June to the 25th of June this is good for work, uh, new opportunities at work, great for education, great for concentration, really good energy there, great for communication as well. Uh, but then, of course, after that, uh, Mercury moves into the fifth and possibly a bit of a dip in your energy, possibly some arguments around you, that kind of thing just something to be mindful of so as I say nothing major but um, you know just some energies to watch out for Venus on June the 9th shifts from your fourth house to the fifth house so this is wish fulfillment oh no this is beautiful this is I mean wishes fulfilled wealth good times great to be with family great to be with friends great to spend time with your partner your significant other the one that you love uh, great time to be with your children I think I said that great time for exams if you're a student and you're studying um, great time for concentration great time to meet the one that you love if you're single so that's really really good and your slow moving planets what do we have going on here okay let's take a little look uh, Mars K to conjunction in the 11th house and you've got full moon in your 10th house happening on the 27th of June so this is beautiful this is really really nice this is lovely this is good this is and it, believe me it's important to have good k energy because this transit goes till March 2019 so this is great what you've got here gains in terms of your business opportunities great time to start a new business uh, as well meditation this is a great time to start a meditation practice also this is great for health this is good income opportunities um, support from your friends and in terms of that full moon happening in the 10th house some kind of culmination some kind of cycle closing and uh, perhaps it might be to do with your career for example so that's just something to to watch there um, Rahu in your fifth house to March 2019 okay so Rahu doesn't particularly like being here and there might be some stress it might be high level um, stress that you know is there but you know you can't quite pin your finger on it uh, you might have some stress to do with your income or your business and you might have issues with your relationship you might be just really confused about love in your life and, and what is the meaning of it and is this the right person and, and that, all that kind of thing might be going on there um, let's take a look at Jupiter uh, in your eighth house to mid-October okay so you might be having to work harder to to get ahead and you might be spending quite a lot you might be traveling um, you might have issues to do with your business you might have a dip in your health uh, one thing I would say with so now Jupiter is going forward July the 10th hope I've got that right one thing I would say is be careful with um, litigation be careful with involving lawyers or any of that kind of thing and uh, best to avoid arguments which is usually the case but <laughs> particularly so uh, at this time for you Pisces moon so that was the June overview. Thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.